Alberto spent 28 years in prison for crimes he did not commit. Uh, he was an 18-year-old kid living in Southgate, Los Angeles, and he was wrongfully identified. Unfortunately for Gerardo, he was wearing some red pants, and some of the victims in the case and the witnesses in the case uh, said that the true perpetrator was wearing red pants. So a few days after the crime, Gerardo was standing on a street corner in the neighborhood and was wearing some red pants. And I think that, in addition to him generally fitting the description of the true perpetrator, landed him in police custody and subjected him to uh, a long interrogation. Knowing that false confessions happen in about 12% 12 of the wrongful conviction cases that happen across the United States, it was a case that needed to get another look. And it also, we were lucky enough that in this case, there was some DNA evidence that we could potentially test that would tell us conclusively whether Mr. Her Mr. Cabanillas was involved in the case or whether he wasn't. And the DNA came back and showed that he was not involved. Yeah, so we get tons of cases every single year. Uh, it's very hard to find a case that actually stands out and where there's actually something that we can do about it. In this specific case, we already had some shaky identifications. Some of the witnesses who originally were asked to identify him weren't completely confident in their initial identifications. Uh, we also had potential false confession from a 18-year-old, basically child, um, who came forward later and said that he didn't do this crime and I confessed because of X, Y, Z. Um, so with all of those reasons together, we definitely wanted to take an extra look at this case. Why did Gerardo falsely confess? What happened? Ooh, there was a lot going on um, that probably could have led to this. One, he was a, a, a young child. He's 18 years old. He was impressionable. Um, people of color, I can't speak for all of them, but many are told by their families, you know, cooperate with police officers or trust police officers or the people that are there to kind of help you. Um, so he probably was like, if I, you know, if I didn't do this crime, then cooperating with them is going to be helpful. So that's one point. But also here in California and in many places throughout the United States, police are allowed to lie to you. And the police officers told him, you know, other people had already identified you in this crime as the person who did this. Um, they promised that if you admitted to certain facts right here and, right here and then, that they would uh, let him go. They promised him that he can go back to his family, that they would either offer him different deals. Um, that lie, probably after seven hours of being interrogated, seemed like a pretty good deal to him at the time. Um, and so probably trusted that the legal system wouldn't convict an innocent man, and sadly that just wasn't the case. Actually all of the brain science that we have available to us now shows that the brain, your brain does not fully form until you are 25 years old. Anyone under 25 is incredibly susceptible to the influences that law enforcement might have over them. Um, and certainly in Gerardo's case, you know, there were all of the elements that you've heard about. They did a lot of the good cop, bad cop. They did a lot of the, I'm going to let you go home if you just tell me the truth. And I'm telling you that the truth is you did this crime. Um, you see that in all of the cases of wrongful convictions that include false confessions. Mr. Cavanillas, I commend you for your incredible strength and resilience, your unwavering determination to prove your innocence in the face of unimaginable diversity is a testament to human spirit. To you and your family, I offer our deepest apology for the horrible injustice that was caused here today. You know, when someone is convicted of a crime, accountability is supposed to take place and it's meant to make us all safer. But when the wrong person is convicted of a crime, not only do we make a mockery of the system, but more importantly, 
the innocent person goes to prison, and the real assailant continues to be out there free to hurt other people. So, you know, I stand here with you with a deep sense of responsibility as a district attorney to address a tragic miscarriage of justice and to celebrate the exoneration and release from prison of an innocent man who was incarcerated at age 18 and spent almost three decades behind bars for crimes that he did not commit. Gerardo was actually released back in May when the district attorney's office had expressed that they had lost confidence in the conviction. And so we worked with the DA's office as well as the court to get him released on an ankle monitor pending the resolution of this, the, the rest of the case. As uh, the DA's office continued to investigate, what they were able to determine was not only was there DNA evidence, but they were able to locate and track down who they believe to be the two true perpetrators. And so the, the culmination of the DNA evidence as well as the, the investigation that the DA's office conducted uh, allowed them to conclude that he was factually innocent of all of the charges against him. And so when we went to court last week, it was to vacate the conviction entirely, to get him declared factually innocent, and allow him to remove his ankle monitor so that he could finally be free from all of these charges and, and clear his name. Tell us about some of the stumbling blocks along the way. It's always a, a, a hard thing to reverse a wrongful conviction. The United States has, has long had this belief that we, we should have finality in a jury's decision. So if a jury comes back and says a person's guilty, we should respect that. And so to undo a conviction, especially one of this magnitude, is an extremely hard thing to do. And that's why it takes so long and so much evidence to get to the final result. In this case, from 2019 when we commenced the DNA testing until 2023 when we had the results and confession from the, the true perpetrator. Uh, do I wish it could go faster? Yes, of course. Gerardo has missed out on a lifetime in the free world. Not just the day-to-day -day little joys of life, but all the major events, the weddings, the birthdays, going to the funeral of your loved one. And he's missed out on raising that eight-month-old baby girl, who is now almost 30. And so as joyous as this moment is for everyone involved, obviously the damage it caused is something we must never forget. And we must not forget that he's not the only one. And we must continue our work together towards a system that does not convict the innocent. Let's go celebrate. Yeah. <laughs>